Hey everyone, John here, All Miniatures Great and Small. Today we're going to be continuing our adventures in 3D printing. Now if you've been following along with the channel uh, over the last few years, I kind of dipped my toe into uh, 3D printing as far as resin goes, printing out uh, uh, many, many miniatures, uh, originally with uh, Elegoo uh, Mars 2, I believe, and then upgrading to an Elegoo Saturn 8K. Uh, but I thought it was time to check out the filament printers and after seeing several favorable uh, reviews of this machine I decided to dive in with the bamboo uh, P1P uh, filament printer. Now this machine um, It was on sale when I ordered it um, and it is uh, Great, I'll just kind of tell you spoil the review from the beginning. I love this machine so far I've had it for a little over a week and I've been printing on it, um, feels like nonstop, and it's a really an enjoyable uh, printer. Now, with resin printing, um, you, you may or may not know, resin printing involves uh, liquid, and uh, you have to wash the miniatures after they are 3D printed, then you have to cure them. It's a multi-step uh, process when it comes to uh, 3D printing miniatures. Now the, the product you get is fantastic and a great quality but there's a lot of steps to it and that's a barrier to a lot of people. It's a lot of, of work. It's kind of its own uh, science. It's its own hobby separate from miniatures and model building that you're, you have to learn and if not master at least become very familiar with. Now the filament printer, particularly this one, um, doesn't quite have the same learning curve, at least in my opinion. Now maybe the 3D printer, learning the resin 3D printers helped me, but switching to the uh, this filament printer really was um, pretty easy for me. This machine, uh, again the bamboo uh, P1P, took maybe 15 minutes to set up out of the box. Now, I did watch some videos, um, assembly and, and uh, first time use, so that helped, but Really, I could have done it without it with the provided instructions. Very simple to do. Um, and it came with a, a spool of, in this case, green uh, PLA, which is the fil one of the types of filament, probably the easiest filament to use when you're starting out. The machine um, has a build area of 256, I believe, by 256, like th 3, 256. Uh, so in all directions, so you can build uh, large things. Now, why did I get this if I have a resin printer and I can print uh, fantastic miniatures on the resin printer? Well, I've been wanting to up my terrain game and build terrain. Terrain uh, printing with resin is doable, but um, the, the build plate's much smaller than you'll see in machines typically like this. And really, a lot of times the quality isn't isn't uh, necessary. Uh, that and the, the resin can take a while too. This, this depending on the size, you might be a, a while on these machines as well. But this one in particular is one of the fastest uh, commercial ones or you know that hobbyists can purchase uh, that's on the market right now, which is really nice. And again, my primary focus in talking about this review and why I like it is in regards to terrain, building terrain for miniature gaming. And uh, you can kind of see, well, if you don't know how this works, there's a spool on the back that has your filament. If you can see that here. And there's uh, the only kind of janky thing about this machine, I think, is this uh, spool holder on the back. There is, uh, so the, the filament goes through into the head that melts the plastic and lays it out on the build plate and it's quite impressive how uh, how it does it technology wise. Uh, it also comes with a bunch of like sample models on the SD card that um, you can print out. So this was just like a vase that I printed out. Um, you don't have to wash it, you don't have to cure it. Once it's done printing it's just there on the build plate and you pop it off and you know you're ready to go. Um, so it's very easy. Whereas when I first introduced the resin printers um, to my family, I didn't get much reaction. They're like, oh, it's dad's latest thing. You know, yeah, it makes miniatures, but so what? But this thing's really kind of captured the attention of not just the gamers in the family, but everybody. 
because you can do lots of things outside of um, the miniature hobby if you want to. Uh, this would be one example. My wife wants me to paint this and it's probably going to go on a shelf somewhere, which is pretty cool. Now, I've got a separate video that's going to be coming out talking about the first terrain project I'm tackling, but just to kind of give you an idea, you probably see some of that there, is uh, this is with a Warhammer 10th edition coming out. Um, I wanted to refresh my Tyranids and I wanted a table of Tyranid terrain. Uh, this was found on, uh, I think, Thingiverse, maybe Cults 3D, but anyway, in the video where we talk about this, this project, we'll go into more detail. But again, you know, this took maybe three or four hours to build, which is pretty fast, which is pretty fast. So overall though, this thing, not only um, is it fast, I like the, the designers, not only do you have slow speed, standard speed, sports speed, and the fastest speed it can print is called ludicrous speed. And it's pretty, pretty darn fast at ludicrous speed. Uh, it has Wi-Fi, which is really nice because I can, you know, maybe at lunch or when I'm out, I can check on the status of the print. It has a camera and a light, so I can see the, the print and how it's coming along. Um, I can also send the print over the network uh, from a computer. Um, you know, I don't have to swap out SD cards like with my Saturn. I have to have a USB that I take to the computer, copy the files, and then bring it here and plug it in. Uh, this is all Wi-Fi, and I imagine that's the way it's going to go. I imagine eventually, if not higher-end resin printers already have that feature, they will shortly. But um, that's really cool with, um, with this printer. So the camera lets me know, USB, I can, you know, I, I was having the kids come in here and take the, the completed print off when I was at work, and then at lunch I could send another print job and I didn't even need to be home. Um, it's really cool. The other cool thing is with uh, this type of technology it's very easy to switch um, PLA filament. Uh, if you run out, you know, if you... I've never been successful with salvaging anything in a resin printer if I run out of resin halfway through the build. It's just pretty much done. But with this, uh, the build, if the machine will stop, you can thread in another spool of PLA and pick up where you left off. Give you a good example of that would be I ran out of the green filament that came with the uh, that came with the machine and switched to a gray filament. I didn't mind the ugly gray uh, because I'm going to be painting all this stuff. But you can see, and uh, well, we'll have a close up here that you know this is uh, picked up perfectly when I switched spools, and it, it, this machine sat there for a couple of hours before I was able to, to do that. Um, so, I mean, really impressive stuff. And I'm sure those of you who have worked with these filament printers for a long time, nothing I'm saying is new to you, but I do wanna to, uh, you know, show off this machine, particularly for miniature uh, terrain application. Now, I haven't sat down and played with it to see how detailed I could get as far as maybe trying to 3D print tanks or um, things like that, but I'm, I'm gonna do some tests because I am kind of curious. Uh, but it's uh, really neat. The other thing that this uh, machine came with standard was a magnetic build plate so I can pop this off and uh, you know flex it and pop the the completed model off and then just slap it back down real easy and it's a textured build plate so the um, the item you're printing sticks to it but it doesn't stick too much and it doesn't stink, stick too little, which is nice. But the other nice thing about this machine, unlike the resin printer, is using PLA anyway, it's not as smelly. So I can actually run it here in the studio while I'm painting and not really worry about um, the smell at all. What this does that the, uh, the Saturn doesn't do is though it vibrates, particularly on ludicrous speed or the higher speeds, it uh, it's noisy too. So. I have been like switching it to slow speed while I've been painting nearby or else it actually shakes the table. And just a little, uh, not warning, but uh, something that I learned when I first set this up right on the table, it was like shaking the crud out of whatever tables I was putting it on. But um, it's actually designed to handle that shake, so even though it might be shaking part of the table, 
the model that it's building, everything is staying um, aligned in the machine, which is really nice. Um, and then obviously you can slow it down if you want to reduce the vibration, which I found painting um, while the table was vibrating to be a little bit harder. But uh, that's just a, a minor, not even a nitpick, just something when you're setting it up, you have a good place for it. Uh, it obviously does have a uh, big footprint. It's a big printer, but that lets you print big pieces of terrain, which is nice. Now this is um, a, basically, I don't want to say stripped down, but this is like the budget version of their top of the line model, which I believe is the, the bamboo carbon one or something like that. But anyway, and that one's fully enclosed, has some other features, has a full color screen, um, but it's almost twice as expensive as this machine. They do have an upgrade kit coming out, which I probably will purchase and review that adds, uh, makes it enclosed, uh, adds an extra fan. But honestly, using PLA, uh, and doing terrain out of the box, this thing is, is fantastic. It's amazing how fast this uh, technology has come over even the last five years. Um, it's really impressive. So I'm looking forward to enjoying this while it is kind of top of the line because in a year or two there's going to be even more amazing machines out uh, for this. Now any downsides to this machine? Well, I don't like the screen. Um, the, the more expensive one, the top of the line, has a full color screen. This kind of has a uh, 2000s phone interface almost. But I've, uh, having worked with this printer for over a week now, I find that I don't really use this much at all. I'm using my phone app to control, and it has a great phone app, to control the speed. Um, you know, manage everything on the printer I can do with my phone that, that I could do here. Um, also, the app on when it's running on the computer and I'm slicing things, everything I can do, I can do elsewhere. So I, you don't necessarily need to use this if you don't want to, um, for the most part. I'm, I'm sure there's something in there that eventually you'll need to use. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, the, the screen I don't like uh, that much. The spool holder is just kind of um, you know, not up to the, the quality of the rest of the machine. And it's totally functional. It's just kind of in a weird spot. It's in the back of the machine. It's like an a afterthought, it feels like. And that could be because they actually do sell a um, multi-spool, like, filament uh, changer that you smack on top, and it has four different colors that can be fed at different times to make multi-color prints, which is pretty cool, but it's also like, uh, at the time I'm filming this, I think that it's called an AMS, uh, like it's an advanced or uh, material system or something like that. It's like $350. So I wasn't ready to add that to the price of this. But anyway, to keep this uh, short, uh, that is the, the Bamboo uh, P1P printer. Uh, it is a great printer. If you're looking for something to knock out terrain, um, this might get you covered quite well. Um, it is still somewhat pricey, but, um, and there are some that are close to speed, this speed a little bit smaller, that, um, you know, if you're looking for something a little bit more affordable, or if you have more money to spend, you could get the top of the line version of this, the Carbon One, that's what I think it is. Um, but there you go. So, if you can't tell, hey, I'm loving this machine. You're going to see some more videos. I am working on that Tyranid Terrain project. That's going to be its own video. Um, and you can see some of the fun stuff I've, I've printed for myself or just for the family or just for goofing around with the new printer. All right, there you go, guys. Let's look at the Bamboo P1P. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and keep on gaming or printing. Take care, guys.